Hi, my beautiful randoms. It is Wednesday. That would make today October 23rd. Yeah, probably. It's October 23rd. Mm-hmm. Guilty. Slacker. Haven't been vlogging. Been really busy. Been... There's just no excuse. I just haven't been vlogging. Um... I wanted to come back on and start a new vlog because when I was going to go to edit a vlog, I realized I don't even have anything to edit because I just have not been vlogging. So I was getting ready this morning after work and I was like, you know what? I have so much stuff to go and do quick. The I only had to work for like an hour this morning um, for the trucking company and then... pump. Thank you. It's like it competes with me and it wants to be heard. Like if I turn on the, the camera, it's like my pump is like, please let's not let the attention be focused on you. Let me beep and be a loud, annoying little, mm. anyways. Um, I did work this morning, but only for an hour. The kids today have a, like a teacher's kind of in-service type deal or records day or something. So they will be home actually any minute now. Um, it's I think it's like quarter to 12 right now. And I had a bunch of things I had to go run and do and get done before the kids got home so that I could be here by the time they got here. So um, since I have a couple minutes, I kind of wanted to update you guys because I've had a lot of you asking me. What is going on with the dystonia diagnosis? What is going on with my diabetes and health-related things? So um, I'm going to throw it out there and let you guys know that yesterday I did have to go see a specialist. Um, she is a movement disorder neurologist specialist, I guess, would be somewhat of her title. She is one of the best ones in the area um, around me, so um, I did have to go and see her yesterday. It was quite a hike to get there, not gonna lie, and there is literally something about me when you put me into that situation of, like, having to go to the hospital or be in a doctor's office, like, I don't know what it is, but I turn into a child for, for number one, like I, not like I'm scared or nervous, which obviously I usually am because I never know what's going to come out of these appointments, but more like I get so antsy and, um, out of control. Like I need a chaperone. I need someone to occupy my mind and my time. So I'm not messing around with things I shouldn't be messing around with. Like if you guys follow me on Snapchat, you probably seen yesterday exactly what I'm talking about. I think I have some of them saved. If I do, I'll put them um, up here over here on the, the side of this video because I literally like just, if you leave me alone for too long, un, unchaperoned, I get a little, I get a little, you know, unruly, I guess we will say. And I just, I don't know, I get nerved up, worked up, nervous, like, I, I just, if I don't have anybody with me to, like, sit and talk to me, I literally just start messing with stuff, like, playing with doctor's gloves, um, playing with guard, like, I just mess with things I shouldn't mess with, <laughs> and it, that is so horrible to admit, because I am supposed to be an adult, but, I don't know what it is. It's nervous energy or something. And when I'm like stuck in a doctor's office or room, I feel like I'm in prison. Like I've never been in prison, so I guess I can't necessarily completely relate, but I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I'm trapped. I feel like I'm under someone else's mercy, I guess. And like, I start getting nervous, I start getting antsy, I start getting, like, where I can't, I don't know, like, I want to break out, like, I want to leave, it's almost like it's a claustrophobic thing or something, but, yeah, I'm sure I probably can add some of the pictures, 
Um, and they'll show you quite about, you know, what I'm talking about. There's even a couple videos I think I made. Like, I literally just mess around to occupy my mouth. My, my mouth. My mind. Um, and if anybody else does want to follow me, I'll put my Snapchat up here. I know I have a lot of people ask about it. And it's sometimes a fun way for me to keep in contact with a lot of you guys. I don't post as much on Instagram, like through the stories on Instagram, as I probably should because I know a lot of you guys also follow me on Instagram, but for some reason I'm always playing on Snapchat and like my kids love Snapchat and they're on Snapchat, so we're always sending each other crazy, weird Snapchats and things like that. Okay, so I got completely off topic. Um, To sum up my appointment yesterday though, I was, I was really, by the time I got home, I was, I was pretty spent. I learned a lot of different things and found out a, a bunch of things that I'm going to have to have a redone that are really bugging me. So I guess basically I'll try to sum it up as well as I can. We all know that I'm a yapper, so I'll probably... This will probably take way too long, but I'm going to try, people. I'm going to try to get to the point. Um, my The specialist that I met, I actually really, really, really liked. She knew what she was doing. She wasn't afraid to, like, grab my foot. It was all in regards to the dystonia. Why am, you know, is it a secondary dystonia? Is it just dystonia on its own? Are there other contributing factors, like... MS or Parkinson's and all of this. Now, the doctor that I had seen prior told me I didn't have to worry about the MS diagnosis or anything. The only problem with that is now, excuse the beeping pump, um, the problem with that is this doctor said she will not rule out MS. She does not believe it to be Parkinson's or anything like that, but <sighs> she's not ready to rule out some of the other things that the other doctor had said he was. So that right there kind of threw me for a loop. So I had a bunch of MRIs done prior of the melon and the neck and everything. And she looked at those and decided that she wants another MRI. I done of my brain and she also wants an MRI done of like my neck down of like the thoracic area like spinal cord I guess I should just say so if I don't know if I told you guys about that or not but I was like oh I'm good put me in the MRI machine I'm fine I'm not claustrophobic I don't have any issues like that and then legit get in there and start hearing that noise and start hearing whatever, and then opening my eyes and realizing, like, there's something right here in front of me, and I can't move, and I'm not supposed to swallow, like, I legit had, like, mini nervous breakdown in that stupid machine, and it was scary. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. I did not think I would have any issues with it. I apparently have issues with it, and now I have to keep thinking about the fact of being stuck in that machine again for another hour. And this doctor's like, well, we can give you Valium. We can give you something that's going to help kind of just calm you down and relax you before you get in there. And I'm thinking, that's not going to help. That is not going to help. Maybe it might help. I don't know. But I don't want anything like that. Like, I'm not... I don't know. So I kind of was upset about the idea that she wants to do all of this other testing and things like that. But... On the other hand, it was like she was being a specialist, you know? She she wants detailed reports. She wants the information she wants to have. And I can also appreciate that about her because she wants to be thorough and extensively go through different things and rule out different avenues of stuff when it comes to the dystonia. Now, being a neurologist, she is also, like, deals with nerve damage and all of that, um... For years and years and years, because of my diabetes and everything else, I have experienced the worst insane foot pain to the point where, obviously, still today, it's even worse. I mean, but trying to build up the tolerance that it takes to get through a night 
when your feet go through a process of just being like that fuzzy, like numb feeling to sharp pains to freeze freezing cold, like it feels like you're standing out in a snowbank and you're getting frostbit. And then it goes to where you're sticking them literally in fire and you're in pain and there's sharp needle like it feels like someone's stabbing you and I can't even sum up what nerve damage feels like. I just I can't because it is like an unspeakable pain that I just I can't even explain. And if anybody out there has it, then you know what I'm talking about. It it didn't start this extreme, but as the years progressed, it's developed into what I deal with every single day and it's horrible. So she, looking at all of that as well, is wondering if the dystonia came from the extreme nerve damage that I suffer because it is diabetic nerve damage and it is also peripheral nerve damage. And she is extremely worried about the fact that some of the nerves in my feet don't even respond to different like electrode like stimulation and things like that. So she wants another EMG done, which is basically an electrode kind of test where they go and they stick needles with little electrodes in them, like into your legs um, from like the back of your knees down to your feet. And they stick them into the, the muscles and the nerves. And then they send these like shocks through them and then you'll like jolt and you'll feel it. And they crank it up and up and up until like your nerves register a response. So it's something that they can kind of watch. I guess that's the best way for me to, you know, describe it. And it was painful. I'm not going to lie. Um, I had it done, but she wants a more extensive, more in-depth one done, I guess. And she wants it done by her and her colleagues. And she is extremely worried about pain management for me. She said she doesn't see people my age with this extensive of nerve damage and then add the dystonia on top of it. And she's like, how do you even... How are you even managing this? How are you even walking for the most part? Um, one of the things she told me is that with this kind of nerve damage, that it can lead to basically being somewhat wheelchair bound using walker, thing like that, things like that, which I don't even feel comfortable repeating. I refuse to believe that that could be in my future. Um... The same thing I told her, I'll tell you guys, like her telling me that I, I need to be meeting up with a pain management specialist or doctor and start going through, you know, different ways of what I'm going to do. And I'm like, right now I'm managing, I manage what I manage on the daily and I don't take anything and I don't want to. And it's not because I'm stubborn and she stopped me and she's like, no, that is because you're stubborn. She's like, I have people on, I guess they're like morphine drip things but like it's something they install underneath your skin and you have control over when you hit the button and it gives you that um that shot of morphine to help you deal with the pain she's talking about how I could be on all of these different medications and I'm just like taking those kinds of meds and things like that just lead me to believe that I'm a weaker person and and it's not me feeling that way about any of you that might take them or need them but I feel like if I get to the point where I can't walk or I can't do the things that I want to do which there's things right now that hold me back when I walk or when I run if my foot twitches or goes into a dystonia storm I fall okay I'm stuck wherever I'm at at that point into until the muscles and the everything in my foot is done contorting and contracting and with the nerve damage and the pain there's each step I can usually never tolerate and I just tell myself you don't have a choice you need to walk so tolerate it suck it up buttercup too many people depend on me and too many things have to be done for me to even believe that diagnosis and or think that it's true and I refuse to take a pill that's going to lead me into having these side effects where they're going to say then take this pill so that it helps calm that pill and 
five pills later and I'm addicted to freaking whatever it might be and I just I feel like I would know when I'm at the point and of needing something and I just I refuse to be that person I refuse to admit that I need that and I'm not going to and I refuse to meet with the pain specialist and maybe it is because I'm stubborn but regardless it's what I want and I manage things the way I manage them and until I guess I can't I I just want to do what I'm doing and I I don't want to think about the future and I, I just want to take the steps that I can right now and worry about where these feet are leading me tonight, tomorrow, maybe the next day, but I am not trying to focus on the, where am I going to be in 10 years? Where am I going to be in five years? Am I going to be able to go run for 10 miles or walk for 10 miles because it's nice out and I want to enjoy the weather and, and watch my children and, and play with them? And I can't, I can't allow myself to think that, that that even is a possibility. So enough about that. So she ordered that EMG test again, and I'm not looking forward to that either. And one of the other pills she got me, this is the part I'm probably going to mess up. So if anyone out there with dystonia is watching this, I apologize. Um, I think I have the pills. I think I have the pills over here. And this is like a carbidopa levodopa prescription. Um, and what this is, basically what she told me is... This pill is, um, how can I sum this up in the words that I guess I even understood it in to some degree? Um, she basically said that these, your body creates a certain, well, let's just call it a chemical or whatever that you need. And in some people, it's very, very rare, but in some people, they don't make enough of this and it literally can trigger dystonia where it sends a message saying your body doesn't have this level that it needs to operate and function correctly. So we're going to attack this muscle in your foot and we're going to just make it twitch for 10 months straight without stopping. And she said she was pretty upset that my neurologist prior hadn't tried me on this pill just to rule it out just to see if it by chance would work and somehow help me. Um, and she prescribed it. The only problem is it makes you extremely nauseous. So I have to take half pills and kind of work my way up within, I believe she said within like five days to a couple weeks, I will know if this is going to have any response or effect in my foot or not. Basically, it just will not twitch as often or it'll slow the twitch down if it's working, and then eventually it'll get to where it's building that level back up in my body, and it'll just start to slow, 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 slow down to where all of a sudden maybe it's normal, and my foot isn't 24-7 twitching, spasming, contracting, contorting, and in pain. So, she does not believe that I'm going to have the response to that that I want because it's so rare. But the fact that she wants to try it and just see, I have no choice but to to give it a go because, <laughs> like I said, I don't want to be taking any pain meds or meds, but I also cannot handle this. I put on a good front often for everyone in my life, and I can't even begin to explain the kind of pain. If you picture a muscle in your body, your foot, your hand, wherever, and that it's contracted and it is spasming and twitching and it never stops for almost 11 months straight now. Can you imagine the pain, the soreness, the the weakness and everything that that causes, especially when it's in like a foot and you're trying to walk because, you know, we're human and we need to do that every day to get from point A to frickin' point B. So yeah, that is the next step. I picked the pills up today. I already took half of one. I, at this point, don't feel like up chucking anywhere. So hopefully that means something. Um, and uh, I'm praying that this works. I am praying that this pill, even though it's so rare to have this, this 
deficiency, I guess we'll call it, if this is what it is and I can take this pill and it can just make that stop, it's never going to change the nerve damage, but if it helps the dystonia, that's all I can freaking ask for. Like, oh my god, something, just something give. So that's kind of the update. So I have a bunch of MRIs coming up. I have an EMG test coming up. I have a new appointment for Botox. Too bad you can't give it to me up here because check this out. Are you seeing these forehead wrinkles? Like, yeah, I'm going to be like, hit a girl up straight between the eyes. Um, <laughs> but this Botox is not for cosmetic and vein issues. Um, the Botox will be an injection straight into the muscle in my foot that doesn't stop twitching. It's going to be painful, she said. So if this pill does not work and I do not become like dope up positive or whatever where I test that I am lacking this specific whatever in my system, um, the next step then is going to, I think it's scheduled for December 1st, and I'm going to then have a Botox injection into that muscle where the Botox lasts for about three months and it can get into that muscle that my brain is telling to constantly trigger and fire and it's going to calm that muscle down where it's just constantly working. It will, it weakens it basically. So that muscle where it's tight and it's going and it's going, once that Botox is in there, it's going to kind of like loosen that muscle up where it, it can't contract and cause them spasms and twitches like it does right now, or at least supposedly that would be the expected and hopeful outcome. Um, it's scary though because they can inject too much Botox and it could weaken that muscle completely to where you don't have use of your foot since it's going into that muscle um, for three months until it wears off, which Lord knows I can't handle either. Um, and you could get it done and it might not be enough of the Botox. So you had it done for basically nothing. So it's kind of like this trial and error time thing. Which also I am not looking forward to. Not at all. Um, but those are kind of the next steps, I guess. And she really wants to pinpoint what is causing the dystonia. What, you know, is it a secondary dystonia? Is it a, a full-on just dystonia? Um, I told her about my eye twitching now underneath here. If I squeeze my eye touch tight. You guys can, I don't know if you're seeing it or if I'm even in focus, but if I squeeze my eye underneath here, this pulls together and twitches, which she said could be another issue from the dystonia, making it that I don't have a focalized dystonia, more of like a um, generalized dystonia, because I've also had the spasms in my shoulder in like the part of left side of my back. So, one step at a time, I guess. Literally one step at a time. Not joking. One foot forward. We can only work on one thing at the moment. And I'm just, I'm trying to like take in everything from yesterday. I had so much blood work done. They drew so much blood because she wants to like rule out all of these other things that can cause I guess, the dystonia and the damage in my feet and the nerves and everything else. So she's having all these blood tests done and I literally almost passed out. My blood sugars dropped super low and they were taking so much blood that they had to stop and then let me drink some orange juice and have some crackers and then I had to go back in and have more blood taken and I literally was just wanting to leave so bad yesterday, and it was like an hour something far away from where we are, and it was just rough. So that is the update. That's the update as far as the dystonia and stuff goes. As far as the diabetes, well, I'm just going to be a type 1 diabetic forever. Forever. Um... I am experiencing hypoglycemia quite often, quite, quite often, which is basically just the big term for low blood sugars. Um, I often don't wear my pump at nighttime because 
I just don't need that basal dosage of insulin because I'm constantly going low and then I'm constantly beeping and I'm constantly irritable and constantly not sleeping, dealing with my feet and everything freaking else. So I've been trying to conserve a bunch of insulin anyway because we all know that we're broke and it's going to be at the end of the year again, which then means, oh yes, indeed, we're already back to that fun point of the year again where when the new year starts, you need to meet that wonderful thing called a flipping deductible before your insurance will help you pay for anything. We all know that I can't meet a 4000 and something dollar deductible out of pocket, out of basically thin air, pulling it out of my butthole. Ain't gonna happen. I digress. So, basically, I am trying to save my insulin and not use it and use smaller amounts of it as much as possible so that I can have insulin to last me through the first couple, three months of the new year because I'm not going to be able to go to my insurance company and say, I need to pick up my insulin. And they're going to say, well, that's $1,400 this week. And I'm going to be like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, can't afford that. Can't. Can't be writing checks that your ass can't cash. So uh, I'm trying to save as much insulin as I can so that I have something to tie me over until the next year when we get our taxes back and I can pay off the deductible and then <sighs> it just never ends, people. It just never ends. Oh. <sighs> I'm just going to keep trying to move forward, take care of my family, do what I freaking can, and not sit here and obsess about the fact that I have all this crap coming up that I honestly don't even know if I want to go to, to be honest, but I don't know. So those are the thoughts that are my thoughts. I'm sorry that these vlogs have been just like, hang out in my cool car with me and let's chat about my boring life. But you know what? This is what I do. You guys know it. Um, I did go to Dollar Tree. That was one of my errands that I had to run before the kids got home because I needed to pick up batteries and some bags and some different things that I need for the kids for different projects for school. So I had to go get a bunch of that. I have a huge Dollar Tree that I need to video and get out for all of you guys. So that'll be coming as well. And I'm going to end this vlog right here for the day, but I will try to be better at vlogging, you guys. I will. I know my kids miss being on the vlog. Jasmine's like, Mom, I have friends at school that are just like, when is your mom going to vlog? When is there going to be a new video? I'm freaking out. <laughs> so she's like, please, Mom, will you make a new video so they leave me alone? <laughs> so I want to do something fun again. Like, I want to, and fun to me is like, no, we don't need to go spend a million dollars at a water park, but something fun, hanging out with my kids, um, down by the water, playing by the park, just whatever it might be. So I will try to add that of to the millions of things that I have to do and I'll try to make something happen and vlog more. So I'm going to end this one because it's super long. I've already sat here and talked for like 30 minutes almost and to all of you guys that still hang around and still want to be part of this random family, I just want you to know how much you guys mean to me, to my family, to to all of us, honestly, and the friendships I've made and the people that I've met through Instagram, on YouTube, through Snapchat now, all because of basically YouTube. I just couldn't be more appreciative and more grateful, so... I hope that you guys all know that, and I really wish that I could be a better vlogger and put more vlogs out for those of you that really, really like them, because I always feel like I'm sitting here having this interaction and talking to, like, one of my best friends, and it's it's you guys, so it's definitely an outlet, even though it's it's work, it's an outlet, and I feel like I'm connected and I'm closer to all of you, and... Basically, I just want to I just want to say thank you. I love you guys. Thank you for following me my random journey of woe is me and 
Um, I hope that you guys are all doing well and you're staying healthy and you're staying active and you're staying happy. And I love you guys a lot and I will see you again soon. Thank you for hanging out and chatting with me today and uh, leave me a message. Let me know what you guys are up to in the comments below and I will see you guys all again soon. Much love, my randoms. Bye.